already started cheating in Lancaster. They've cheated. We caught him with 2,600 votes. No, we caught him cold. 2,600 votes. Think of this. Think of this. And every vote was written by the same person. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. It must be a coincidence. It must be a coincidence. Again, not, not only did he not catch. In this clip, we've got a heated exchange between Ann Coulter and Jen Uger as they dive into controversies surrounding the 2016 and 2020 elections. Ann Coulter pushes back hard on Jen Uger's statements, challenging his views on what really went down in both elections. Ann Coulter and Jen Uger hold nothing back as they debate each other's perspectives, with both sticking firmly to their points. It's a fiery back and forth that keeps you hooked. Let's jump in and see how Ann Coulter and Jen Uger take on these hot topics. Right, it was the Pennsylvania officials who came forward, and these aren't votes. These weren't ballots. These were ballot applications, and now, as they've investigated them, more than half already were determined to be valid. They're continuing to investigate them. I mean, and this to me is the, the most dangerous stuff that Trump is saying, which is claiming that this particular election is already being stolen. Um, I think, yeah, it's stu I think it's stupid. It's politically stupid. It's not going to help him. Um, I basically agree with you, but for the sake of argument, I do have one one little point I'd like to make about this, and that is, okay, Trump shouldn't be saying it, but let's say somebody else is saying it. Say I'm saying it. <laughs> um, I'm sick of hearing all the time that there is no vote fraud, no vote fraud, absolutely no fraud, vote fraud. Dan, nobody's looking for the vote fraud. Did you hear about the non-citizen Chinese student at University of Michigan who voted last week? And oh, his vote will count. If you're into this kind of content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It makes a huge difference for the channel. Now, let's dive back into the video. Because you can't, you can't get it back now. Right. You know how they caught him? Caught him like they're looking for him? For some reason, he went back the next day and he asked for his ballot back. Yeah. So unless you, you vote you vote illegally, you're not a citizen, unless you go and ask for the ballot. So it's like asking, you know, Confederate sheriffs, are you letting black people vote? <laughs> yeah, but, well, we can't find any vote fraud here. Well, you're not looking. The, but and the they're notion, not looking but here. On, so yeah, I'm but, sick of hearing there's no vote fraud. There's a lot of vote fraud. Maybe Trump shouldn't be talking well, rather about Rather than it. me ask the question, I'll let Cenk respond. Cenk, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was getting worried about all the agreement here. Uh, so uh, <laughs> thank you, Ann, for bringing up something that's wrong. Uh, so... Uh, Heritage Foundation, very right wing think tank, the guys who did Project 2025, uh, looked into voter fraud over a period of, I think, about 20 years. And they did find it. They found 0.00006% of the vote was fraudulent. So meaning it is totally statistically insignificant. It's the kind of desperate things that losing candidates do. I can see where Jen Uger is coming from to a degree. And I also get Ann Coulter's point. She mentions it might not be the best idea to start claiming voter fraud before an election even begins, especially if there's no real evidence yet. It's easy to see how jumping to conclusions could create more division or mistrust in the process. On the flip side, I understand the logic behind wanting to be extra cautious. Worst case, if there's no fraud, the attention to these issues just keeps everyone in check. It's also worth acknowledging the independent folks out there like Steven Crowder and Charlie Kirk, who are investing their own resources to ensure the election is as fair as possible. They have teams on the ground, from both parties, making sure everything's on the level. Whether you agree with them politically or not, having people actively monitoring for fairness isn't a bad thing. And I get why Ann Coulter is cautious, too. Elections have a global impact. Decisions made here in the U.S. can influence international dynamics, as we've seen. Like it or not, the world does tend to follow America's lead. For example, Trump's stance affected how countries like China and Russia operated, and when Biden took office, things shifted. It's not naive to think that some people might try to influence these outcomes. After all, there's a lot at stake globally. At the end of the day, wanting a fair election shouldn't be a partisan issue. Having both sides watch closely and independently verify the process is essential, especially when it has such wide-reaching impact.
The only upside here, Dan, is that once I started hearing them cry and cry about how the election was rigged, I was like, oh, I guess their internal polling shows that they're about to lose. So that's what a losing candidate does. You're absolutely right. First of all, they caught it. So what kind of grand scheme is it when you catch all the people who are doing the fraud? Uh, so that doesn't make any sense at all. But, but it's Trump. He doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> but overall, here's what you're not going to do if you think you're going to crush in this election. Complain that it's rigged. But, they, but Dan, the idea um, that I, they, aren't, they aren't looking, I mean, they are absolutely looking. I mean, a lot of these states are actively, they're very proud of the fact, you know, you listen to the former Secretary of State of Arizona, right? He'll tell you that in 2020, he was looking for fraud. He was looking for it again and again, and he couldn't find it. So this notion that they're not looking okay. for it, I don't know. Um, well, okay. Well, this is done state by state, and in, yep. at, in the state of Michigan, all you need is a utility bill to vote. And I just described a case to you that they did right. not catch until the guy came back and asked for his ballot back. So it's done state by state. I'm sure they're looking for it in some states, but liberals have really got to stop saying there's no evidence. There's I agree. no evidence. No I, one's I, looking for it. Yeah, no, I got to agree. I, <laughs> I think I agree there with should you that be they're... one day to vote, and man, there should be voter ID. Look, but I agree with you that there should be voter ID. I agree with you that there has been voter fraud, but there's nothing to suggest it's changing any outcomes. There's nothing to suggest that it's overturning any elections. And this is why, you know, when AP went back a year later and looked at every single one of the claims of voter fraud, every one, and they looked at what would happen, what was the prosecution, et cetera. I mean, I had the Secretary of State of Georgia on, again, Republican, Brad Raffensperger. I said to him, you know, look, you know, AP says you had 64 cases. Uh, and he said, well, in the end, it was actually 25. But, but and, and, you know, they all are very familiar with exactly how many. And I just think of all these things, this Liz Cheney nonsense, this nonsense about the, oh, he was trying to shoot the media. What's surprising is that some voters are concerned about democracy, but might not see the bigger picture of how it's affected by both sides. When it comes to people like Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, Ann Coulter, or Jen Uger, actions often get overshadowed by repeating narratives that people have heard again and again, especially around big figures like Trump. It's like once these talking points are out there, they just stick, and people don't look deeper into what's actually going on. So, what do you think about this back and forth between Ann Coulter and Jen Uger? Do you think they're onto something, or is it all just noise? Let me know in the comments.